It's last day. 12 hours from right, about 12 hours from right now. And he's no news slash show. What? Dan has something he needs everyone to know. Watching the news, it's really important. You have to dress warmly tomorrow because it's going to be minus 45. Thank you. I'll be here all day. That that was so dad. (laughs) Dan, that was so dad. I know usually I'm the one with the dad jokes, but he just pulled that out of his pocket today. That was so dad. He he wait, he's been planning, he was waiting to do that. That's even more dad. That's another level of dad. He's been waiting to tell that to all of you. That's that's like a that is like that's that's dad upon dad. That's dad squared. I mean he's 51. <laughs> okay, so I don't know if y'all know this, but men reach a certain age and your personality becomes socks with sandals. And bad jokes. I am not wearing socks. And, and, and like needing to water the lawn. I have a sprinkler system. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, here's it's 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 twelve hours from the end of the Trump administration. Now, before YouTube goes nuts, we're not saying that's going to fix everything. No. We're not saying everything's going to be puppies and rainbows. I, I, I made a comparison early in the show. It's like if you have a rotted bad tooth and it needs to come out and you've had it for ages and you couldn't afford to get it out and you finally get it pulled out. Well, number one, you're missing a tooth. Yeah. Number two, you have a giant cavern in your gums. It's going to bleed and hurt for a long while. You might need to be on medication for a while, but, but you're eventually probably still, you're probably still going to need antibiotics. Right. Eventually. Hopefully, things will get better. It's it's going to be a long process. But you've taken the first step. Right. So it's... But what, what a particular interest to me, aside from all the horrible things that people have had to endure, and, and just, just a list of good things tomorrow. Uh, we're back in the World Health Organization. Uh, the transgender ban on uh, the military, that's gone. Back in the um, Paris Climate Agreement. Paris Climate Agreement. All those things. So, for, And that's just tomorrow. Bang, right yeah. out the door. But for me personally and for this stupid show, can I just say the last four years of trying to do a stupid new show, it has sucked all the oxygen out of the room. You don't have... I, I, have, I have wonderful people like Catherine. I have you folks at home trying to find stories. Okay. But it's gotten way f- night harder. Yeah, in the era of of Trump, because it, it, they, they those all those stupid stories just jump right to the top. Yeah. And I have done my best to avoid them because, well, we were kind of inundated with them. It wasn't exactly right. news or and all that funny. Not really our brand. Yeah. Although it kind of became everybody's brand the past four years because Jesus <laughs> cracker. <laughs> but uh. Yeah, it's been a little harder to be like this naked guy on the highway when like literally the world's on fire. Like, yeah, yeah it's really, you know, we have we're trying to, to joke about people putting cars in swimming pools and our president is talking about maybe we could uh, like inhale ultraviolet light all, or something. Maybe you should all be injecting bleach. OK, so it's it's going to a little tough. We're, we're so, just looking forward to just. Having that constant, I, I was saying earlier, it's like our adrenal glands are like a 15 year old fan belt. They're completely stripped. Do you know the John They're, Mulaney bit? There's a horse in a hospital. Yep. That's what it's been for four years. He was like every now and then. Man's a prophet. Man's a f- prophet. And the worst days are when you don't hear from the horse at all. <laughs> <laughs> like. Hope, he, uh, hope rehab goes well for him because we need John Mulaney. Yeah. All right. With that in mind, we have a collection of stuff that's not really related to that because the stupid does go on. It will go on. No matter what happens, stupid marches on. On and on. That That is our that is the, the, the legacy of our species. Let's get the intro rolling. Turn this down. And here we go. Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, 
find all sorts of horrible stuff. Bring it back here for a little segment we like to call what the fuck is wrong with you? Did you say find all kinds of purple stuff? Horrible. I don't know. Fuck, oh, I don't care. Because I was thinking like purple stuff, Sunny D. <laughs> I'm like purple stuff. So are we sponsored by Sunny Delight? Do they still make Sunny Delight? We're going to start with an incredible news story this week. I, 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 I don't even know how to set this up. It's once in a lifetime, water flowing underground. Let's just roll with this. Gwyneth Paltrow's <gasps> vagina scented candle explodes into flames. This bitch. I am going to say this sentence again because never again will I be able to say this. Gwyneth Paltrow's vagina scented candle explodes into flames. Just bask in it for a second. Jody Thompson, 50, won the risque product sold by the Hollywood star and wellness guru in an online quiz. Candle. Sure you did. Yeah. The candle described on Gwyneth's Goop site as, quote, funny, gorgeous, sexy, and beautifully unexpected. Really? That's, that's yeah. But Jody was taken by surprise after lighting it when a 50 centimeter flame leapt from the candle and out of the glass jar media consultant told the sun the candle exploded and emitted huge flames with bits flying everywhere so a lot like having sex with Gwyneth Paltrow I was gonna say I guess I guess Tony didn't really cure extremists did he? <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's why he oh you know I've never seen anything like it. The whole, the whole thing was ablaze and too hot to touch. There was an inferno in the room. Look at this shit. That, pff, that, that label is all of us right now. That, that is a mood. That label. Just, look at that. I don't understand the appeal of this product. Like, <laughs> I have a vagina. Mm -hmm. It does occasionally smell like things. Mm -hmm. I will not accept your speculation as to what. Mm -hmm. Fuck you, Internet. But uh, I don't feel the need to put a wick in it and light it. Like, <laughs> like, uh, I wouldn't buy a ball sack candle, <laughs> even if it was Chris Evans. Even if Chris Evans was selling a candle that was called This Smells Like My Ball Sack, I'd have to think twice. And I probably wouldn't. Buy what it. if it was also shaped like a ball sack? Would that entice you as oh. well? <laughs> you know, the mental image of just setting a ball sack on fire <laughs> is appealing. <laughs> what if it had like a billion little wicks sticking out? Of it? <laughs> like braided pubic hair? Yeah, exactly. This, all right, the next one, th this is kind of definite. I think this is pretty much the most out outlandish story this week. I did not it's expect America's this. America's ball sack. It certainly is. <laughs> I don't quite know how to, to preface this one. We're, we're just, we've got some weird shit this week. Like, we don't always, but this is just like, what? Thief returns after stealing Oregon woman's car, yells at her for leaving four-year-old son in the vehicle. This is Portland. Yep. Because it feels like a plot on Portlandia. Oregon police are searching for a man who stole a car Saturday morning without knowing a child was in the backseat and came back to lecture the victim of the car theft for leaving her child unattended. When the suspect saw the child, he returned to the mother and reprimanded her, threatening to call police on her and then drove away in her car. <laughs> Boy he still stole the car. The, the boy was unharmed. Uh, she was 15 feet away from the car on the other side of the glass. That's, that's, you need to watch your kids. I need to take the car and go. Um, suspect describes a white male, long, dark brown braided hair, of course. It's Portland. You gotta know it's, he wore a multicolored face mask. <laughs> this really does sound like Portlandia. Yeah. It's like a fucking bit. I swear to God, it does. 
I wouldn't believe it if it wasn't coming from like a news site. This was also It's from CNN, Jesus. When when they tried to do a Firestar solo comic, the first issue, like she stops a carjacking and it's two kids that have taken a car out for a joyride not realizing there's a baby in the backseat. <laughs> but it doesn't end like this. I just I love the I love this guy was like it just came back to lecture her and threatened to call this is just really irresponsible. <laughs> you need to think about your life choices and taking your car. <laughs> Can you just You're lucky I didn't call a cop. You're lucky I'm currently committing grand theft auto or I would have called the cops on you. Can you imagine the look on her face as all so many things to process? My child was almost taken. My car was taken. Wait, who is this guy? Oh, there's my kid. My car was taken. Just there's a there's a, a cornucopia of things happening here. God grant me the confidence of a mediocre white man. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, this this sounds like a bit, doesn't it? This sounds like something yeah. you'd see on the fucking Simpsons or some this shit. Doesn't sound no this is like a kids in the hall sketch or some shit <laughs> but it happened it fucking happened oh here's another one that happened unfortunately this is going to be with us for a while but i picked this one out specifically because wow this lady wow the energy is is strong the, the dark side strong with this one Mad woman in mask meltdown at bagel shop. Oh, I saw this video. Oh, yeah. Florida woman who decided to make an anti-masker stand at an Einstein Brothers bagel shop in Boca Raton, Florida, was arrested yesterday for trespassing following a recorded confrontation with police. When Cindy Falco Di Corrado, a 61-year-old resident... You have what? to pronounce that correct. It's Cindy Falco Di Corrado. <laughs> right? 61-year-old resident nearby Boynton Beach refused to wear a mask upon entering Einstein Brothers around 11 a.m. Store manager called the cops. Now, the, the things she says are amazing and horrible. Quote, I'm an American and I'm allowed to breathe and it's against my religion and it's against the amendment. Which amendment? The 20th amendment. Yeah, oh, the amendment. The one, that one. Uh, D. Corrado, uh, they try, the deputy tried to get D. Corrado to leave the shop, but she told him, quote, you need to read the Constitution and get your hands off of me. She claimed the cop was kidnapping her when he grasped her wrist. Second patrolman. There's also a point in the video where she just starts screaming. Yep. Cops lifted her from a table and squirted her outside. She's just screaming, quote, I am not under arrest. Leave me alone. That's not up to you. <clears throat> she then screamed, I can't breathe, though her face was uncovered and she was not being choked. Uh, with her hands cuffed, De Corrado leaned over the car's hood and chanted, quote, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I come against these principalities and powers, this abuse, this abuse. When D. Corrado demanded to know why she was arrested, a cop replied that she had been trespassing, quote, you can't trespass in a public business. They rent the property. <sighs> Amazing. Everything you just said was wrong. And the, the, the mug shots kind of just... She's yeah. she's having a nice day. Look at her. She's wearing head to toe leopard print in the video. <clears throat> I'm like, I like leopard print. Probably too much. <laughs> but you do one leopard print piece per outfit. One. Not like the top and the leggings and the purse. Like, that's too much. When a just the, the part where she just starts screaming. Like, what do you think that's going to do? When a deputy took hold of De Corrado's wrist, quote, she began to pull away and immediately ran east into oncoming traffic. She was subsequently directed to the ground and handcuffed. Directed to the ground. 
I I don't even this part this is a person who has gone 60 years through their lives. They are allowed to function, they are allowed among us, they are allowed to vote, and there's not a damn thing we can do about it. This is this this is welcome. Now this is America. Um, I'm quoting a lot of music tonight. This is um, America for some people. <clears throat> Only certain Americans get to act like that around the cops. Yeah, yeah, because otherwise, yeah. There's, this, there's certain Americans that if they did a fifth of that, <laughs> I, I I love she stops and she's asking Jesus for help. Like he's got, not got more important shit to deal Jesus with. Right? on a cloud somewhere filing his nails like, bitch, I do nothing so. You keep my name out of your mouth. <laughs> I just, you can't trespass in a public business. How do you go through your life that stupid? There's loads of, all the anti maskers are like, this is public property. I can do what I want. No. No. Remember the whole, you shouldn't have to make a cake for gay people thing? You won that one. Congrats! Consequences. Business doesn't have to do business with you. No, if they don't fucking want. This sadly, this is not going away anytime soon. And after the pandemic's over, there, I, I feel sure they're going to find new ways to just be absolute giant toddlers. And they're all in just going to start not wearing shoes at McDonald's because freedom. I don't have to wear pants anymore. That's not. And that's what I was going to say. I'd be like, I notice you're wearing a shirt and shoes. Why is that? Well, it's required to come in here. Really? It's really good. <clears throat> I got rid of your sign. Now would have been a perfect time. Yeah. My I have a right to a zombie bite yeah. sign. He just threw that away. Uh, so, uh, next one. This is another amazing. Ha- we got some great shit tonight. And I by that, I mean terrible shit. Basket it because I don't think we'll ever see this again. Serial toilet thief. Is arrested after police find something to go on. <sighs> I mean, I imagine that took some time, being as all the toilets have been stolen. <laughs> I mean, they almost got the right headline. They could have said, "Police find something to go in." Well, no. Do you go in the toilet? You go on the toilet. Yeah. What are you doing? You I don't just, urinate on the Do you just lift a seat and dive in? Like <laughs> whatever. Japanese police have arrested a man on suspicion of carrying out a series of toilet thefts in a case which left many baffled. Uh, Ryusei Takada, 26, is suspected of stealing scores of toilets from houses in uh, Futabashi City uh, while they were under construction. Police arrested Takata, an office worker at one of the construction companies, after he sold a brand new toilet to a second-hand store in the city. Officers believe Takata used his knowledge of the worker's schedules to sneak onto sites and steal the toilets when they were off shift. Okay, let's pause here. This is your scam. You're stealing. You can steal construction supplies. I get that. There's money there. You know, copper and, and, and all that. But you had a niche, it would appear, of selling stolen toilets second hand. Yeah. I, I I don't think, you know, I'm not, you go to the thrift stores around here, they're going to be like, look, we're full up. You gave us like five last week. We're full up. We don't yeah, need any more like, toilets. <laughs> is there is there like a toilet shortage in Japan? I don't know about. Is Is there a toilet fence? Is that, is yeah. that how that works? Is, is that is, a market? Um, police were unable to catch the thief dubbed, quote, the god of toilets by local media. Okay. <laughs> the god of toilets. That's going to follow you, buddy, for the rest of your life. Is that like, is that like the Lord of Thunder? <laughs> <laughs> I sold it to a thrift shop to cover my living expenses. You had access to your construction company. Presumably you have access to the good shit. Yeah. Aluminum, copper, metal. Copper wire, man. 
That would, that would, you, you just grab a fucking couple of spools of that. You're set. That's hundreds of dollars right there. And it's not nearly as heavy. <clears throat> no, it's not. You can roll those. You can, those roll. You, you can't roll a toilet. Yeah. Like, how are you even transporting them? 26. I, was this suddenly lucrative? I, I, I don't understand. There's a, there's a, there's an economy going on here. Is this a Japanese thing? I don't get it. That's what I'm like. Is there like a toilet black market? <laughs> I just, it's, it's so Are weird. Are special toilets? The God of Toilets. <laughs> Jesus. What a, what a crappy demigod to be. <laughs> like, Zeus is really scraping the bottom of the barrel. So when you, may, you got the god of toilets. You may be asking yourself, how do I top the god of toilets this week? Oh well, it, it we're we're just we're plunging ahead. <laughs> Harrisburg man who got high and naked during his first day of work can't beat indecent assault uh, conviction. Carl Gamby had a bizarre first day of work. It was self-inflicted. According to investigators, Gamby, 32, of Harrisburg, went into a restroom and injected himself with bath salts and fentanyl on August, uh, March 28th, uh, 2019, during his first shift as a clerk at the Ocado Lodge. Uh, this is this is Florida. Yeah. No, it's Pennsylvania. This man is alive? Yeah. He stumbled out of the bathroom grabbed a female co-worker from behind and kissed her neck. She, then he took off his shirt and repeatedly tried to get the woman to kiss him as she yelled for him to get away. The woman fled to her car, called 911, and later police said that as she drove away, Gamby yelled, quote, before you leave, I just want to show you something, and that's when he started to take his pants off. Gamby was naked when the cops arrived a few moments later. His clothes were strewn around the motel lobby, and a used syringe was found lying in the bathroom sink. Security cameras at the Econo Lodge recorded the whole thing. The recording showed Gamby was naked by the time the woman's car left the parking lot. First day at work, huh? <clears throat> I have been to many first days at work, as I'm sure quite a many of you have been. My first days of work have always been that kind of nervous energy. I'm like, okay, I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna learn this stuff. Uh, where's my supervisor? I want, I want to make a good impression. I'm gonna get used to the place. I have never decided now is the time to inject myself with weird shit. Bath salts and fentanyl. Bath salts Together. and fentanyl. Didn't know bath salts can be injected. Technically, no. you can inject anything. Technically. I mean, technically you can. That doesn't mean you fucking should. I... <laughs> I, I, I maintain that I am surprised that this man is alive. Right? Fentanyl doesn't fuck around. Right? How do you... Why? What was the plan? I don't get it. You went to all the trouble of getting a job. You got a job. Just to show up on your first day and do this. And, and this presumably had not been the first time he was on drugs. But the, the idea that... I can do I can work high. I got this. I can handle this. No. Like I had to call out my second day at a job because I was legitimately very sick and I was freaking out about it. So I was like, it's my second day. They're gonna fire me. Right. And luckily that didn't happen, but they were like, You realize this is your second shift. And I'm like, Yeah, and I would one hundred percent be there if I could go an hour without throwing up. That's but not like you don't want me on a register right now. You know, they, just the other day, I, I read an article about, um, I think it was, it was on Twitter. Uh, a dude was saying, like, he real, realizing the horrors of America when he was overseas, and he tried to explain that we had limited sick days, yeah. and they were just baffled by that concept. What do you mean? If you're sick, you go home. But I won't get paid. There's a lot of jobs where you don't even have sick days. Right. Just baffled. Just realized what kind of a hellscape we're in. Anyway, that's, that's this, this. This was a choice. This was a yeah. fucking why? Like, good God! And your first, your first day, you're usually filling out fucking paperwork <clears throat> and watching boring training videos. Like, 
Imagine if you're the person who works with the, the very first day you meet this guy, that all of a sudden this shit happens. All of a sudden he's rubbing on you and taking his clothes off. That That's not normally how most of these training program things go. I've had to train new people at a job before. And uh, is that, I've never had them immediately strip and then rub up on me. That That would be new. I mean, unless you're like training for your new job at Lord Baelish's brothel, <laughs> in which case that seems to be the norm, right? <clears throat> but not so much at the Econolodge. Our last story has me baffled beyond words. Have you ever seen the Terminal with Tom Hanks? No. Okay, it's I supposedly based on a true story, I think, or, not, or something like that. Um, I doubt. I, I, I don't remember. It's been so long, but it's about a uh, foreigner who comes to America, but while he's here at the airport, his country collapses. So his, v, his, his passport is immediately no longer good. So technically, he's a man without a state. He can't leave the airport because he can't enter America but oh he, yeah, so he just ends up living there. He for a lives. While. He lives in the airport. Yeah, because he can't go. He can't go anywhere because he has no more uh, no passport. No more. So he's stuck. Well, and you know, you know, I'm not thinking about it. that. Wasn't a true story. That was just I. Well, now it is kind of. Um, this I, what? And did you sign? Uh, say, uh. And Ditya Singh, I'm, am I saying that right? I don't want to say that wrong. I think it's Singh, but I'm probably, someone in the channel correct me if I'm saying that wrong. Uh, I know there's, I, I don't want to be like there's a silent consonant in there or something. Um, man found living in airport for three months over COVID fears. I'm going to have to bleep that. Um, can you believe that? I still can't say that word on YouTube. Still? Still, yeah. Freaking weird. <laughs> hey, uh, let's see. Is anyone in the channel correct? Singh? Thank you very much. Uh, Andita, uh, uh, Andita Singh was arrested on Saturday after airline staff asked him to produce his identification. He pointed to a badge, but allegedly belonged to an operations manager who reported it missing in October. Police say Mr. Singh arrived on a flight from Los Angeles to O'Hare International Airport. Oh, so, God, he was living in O'Hare? Yeah, he, he is from L.A. He's not from another country. He's from America. All right. In O'Hare, it's a dump. He reportedly found the staff badge in the airport and was, quote, scared to go home due to the pandemic. He managed to live on handouts from other pastors and told the judge the case. So if I understand you correctly, you're telling me that unauthorized, not employee individual was allegedly living within a secure part of O'Hare Airport Terminal from October 19th, 2020 to January 16th, 2021. And was not detected. I want to understand you correctly. That's what the judge said, the prosecutor. Mr. Singh lives in a suburb of L.A. and does not have a criminal background. Charged with felony criminal trespass. A restricted area of an airport. It really makes you feel good about all that airport <clears throat> security, huh? Get yeah, right? Shoes. Dude, just live in there. Like, for three... <laughs> okay, look. This... The, 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 the pandemic has me freaked, too. I yeah. gotta tell you. I check my, t whenever I get a cough, I immediately check my temperature. J okay. However, I have been freaked. I haven't been, I must live in an airport for three months to protect myself freaked. But here's the thing. I understand that freakouts of this nature are not rational. Mm -hmm. I have a mental illness. Your right. brain just does shit to you. But given the option between going to my own home Right. And living in a giant airport teeming with people. And O'Hare is just terrible. I hate O'Hare so o much. O'Hare is a fucking dump. It's the worst. Yeah. And it's the way station in between everywhere. Yeah. So, like, literally everybody's passing through, like... It's either O'Hare and Atlanta or Atlanta. Atlanta's like being in a giant mall, which, but it's it's kind of newish, so it's okay. O'Hare is just, the sh is just terrible. It's shitty. This is the worst possible <clears throat> place to be. Yeah. If you're concerned about infection, like airports are made of germs. I don't know if you know that the walls are actually made out of germs. Yeah. People are coming from everywhere. And I guarantee yeah. you, a lot of them were infected. Yeah. But you decided to be among three months and nobody noticed. 
that's that is also disturbing. That is that, that's the kind of the big takeaway here. Three months with the TSA. And it's it's not like this was like a heightened level of trap. Well, I guess uh, November, December were travel hot, yeah. were busy, but not as busy as they normally are. This is probably the slowest travel time in decades. And they still didn't notice his ass. Just living in the secure area, wandering around with a stolen li- shoes for safety. <laughs> right? And you can't have more than this much shampoo or the plane will yeah, explode. You absolutely cannot have that water bottle. Right. Because it's safety. Yeah. Like, they didn't cancel that fucking lanyard the minute it was reported stolen. Yeah. That that should have been that should that should have been right out there. Like so many things went wrong here. And like I feel for this guy. I Yeah. Every couple of weeks, like we go to Target. That's our big fucking date right now. <laughs> we go to Target. Yeah. And just, you know, get groceries and stuff. And we get home and I'm just kind of like, did I like did I touch anything? Did I breathe on anybody? Right. Oh my god, like am I okay? But I'm not going to live at the Target. <laughs> and even because living in the Target that would be worse. You know, if I had the choice between O'Hare and a Target, I'd live in Target. That'd be comfy. True. That'd be at least kind of comfy. Yeah. You know, they they, at least they Target has like pillows. They have fresh produce. You know, it's it's yeah, it's, and snacks. Yeah. I I uh, how did just how many tax dollars have gone into the TSA and this yeah. one dude just wandering around? Like it weren't no thing. If he had, if he had been of nefarious intent, he could have done all sorts of shit. Just been like a constant saboteur and shit. Yeah. The yeah, that fuck? is. And anyway, if you're if you're flying from one part of America to another. You're like you said, you're either stopping at Atlanta or O'Hare because mm-hmm. direct flights are a fairy tale anymore. I mean, let's... so like everybody has passed. If you've been on a plane, you've probably been to O'Hare. Let's let's just be thankful this guy was was scared and not malicious. I myself once slept on the floor at O'Hare for five hours. Layovers are. I have you we've all done that. Have you ever been propped up against the wall right next to the outlet? Got your laptop plugged in. Anyone comes near it, you like bury your teeth like a fucking chimp. I did that at JFK overnight with strep. Mm -hmm. I was waiting on the morning shuttle, so I was just curled up on a floor. I bought a paper thin blanket from the Hudson News because I was had a fever. So yeah, yeah. the, The first thing we learned this week is um, we didn't realize how bad the TSA was at their job. I mean, we knew. And but, that's amazing. But we didn't know. They have been pretty yeah. bad. This is super bad. This is like, holy moly. What are you actually doing? Like, what the fuck are you doing at like, your job? All you had to do was not let Frodo and Sam into Mordor. <laughs> One job. <laughs> One job. Um, but they're three feet shorter than all of y'all. But they stole some helmets and oh, well, they're not the work. Um, we we we've learned that uh, the first day of work, um, the best way to make a good impression is not bath salts or sexual assault. No, that's a pretty bad one too. That's 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 pretty. That's, that's like no one wants to see your dick times a billion. Um, we've learned if you steal just a few toilets. You're going to be the god of toilets until the day you die. Every yeah. t- every time someone searches this man's name, the first thing that's going to come up is god of toilets. I mean, he should just own it. Should trademark he that. Should le- he should learn everything there is to know about toilets and just be the god of toilets. It's not, you know that's actually not a bad idea. That's monetizing your 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 internet. You're not going to get rid of that branding. Right. www.godofgodofgodofgodofgodofgodofgodofgodofgodofgodofgodofgodofgodofgodofgodofgodofgodofgodofgodofgodofgodofgodofgodofgodofgodofgodofgodofgodofgodofgodofgodofgodofgodof
wrong. Yeah. And just be fine. Just get by completely wrong. And we all have to deal with your ass. Um, we have learned that, you know, two wrongs don't make a right. Um, no. You, you, you can't, like, threaten someone with bad parenting when you've stolen their fucking car. Like, come on, man. We're, what, like, the, the lack of self-awareness is and stunning. Imagine, think about the, the description of that guy. He's a total fucking hippie. Yep, he is. So you're sort of like, come on, man. That's just really irresponsible. <laughs> And finally, we've Don't learned leave my car smelling like patchouli, Gary. <laughs> and finally, this week we've learned that the smell of Gwyneth Paltrow is explosions. Kind of makes you worry for Chris Martin, huh? 